Hey, I'm Jonathan with Woke360, and today we're showing you Bumble Brews with Livy Azzarello, and this is her concept. So Bumble Brews here on Overland Court, been working on this for the last few months. Tomorrow's the grand opening, and I'd love to hear, Libby, how you guys developed this idea and, and where it all came from, and talk about the process. Yeah, definitely. Way back, I guess almost a year ago, we have a two-year-old. So we started taking her around to some of these indoor playgrounds and we visited Bumble Brews in Cary. So there's an original location over there. And we had also visited a location near where we live in Fuquay. And that one actually ended up being for sale. So I got all excited about it. I was like, we have to try this. This would be so much fun. But it got snapped up right away. So throughout this other week, we had been you know, visiting all these other spaces and fell in love with the concept of the carry location. So we went back to them and we said, is there any chance you guys had ever thought of opening a second location? Could we partner with y'all? Because it was such a cool concept and it really hit on all the parts of our life. So we have a two-year-old, we have a love for local beer, now for coffee as well. And I think all of those things, as well as creating community. So as parents, you know, especially with family not in town, it's really hard to find friends and to find people you can rely on, especially with young children. So that's kind of where, you know, the idea was born. When we met with Blair early on to, to walk through her place over there, one of the most encouraging things that I heard was how the fire marshal visits them repeatedly to throw people out. So that had to be a great thing for the business plan. So they opened actually in September of 2020. So imagine opening a place filled with tiny germ monsters during one of the biggest germs in history. Persisted through all of that. They had some amazing systems developed and they had a line out the door for the day they opened. And they continuously do that. And when we visited too, I can't remember if you were with us or not, but we met a mom who had been there twice in one day. So she came in the morning just to get out of the house with her child, and then she came back with the dad at happy hour. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we hope to bring here. And Mark and I are complete and total opposites. So this has actually worked really well for us to start together. From the design and construction side of things, that worked really well on our side because Libby very much the creative mm -hmm. and was great to work with and, and we developed a plan and then Mark was really more on the financial and we went through the budget. We had to tone down a couple things to make the budget work, um, which is the normal mm -hmm. process of things. The execution went great. Libby was very clear on what she wanted. So as we picked floor finishes and colors and countertops, it was really great working with you guys. You know, this is our, not only our first business together, I'm in real estate full time, but this is our first brick and mortar business, our first lease. I was like, I don't even know, you know, where to find a building. I don't even know what to look for in a lease. And our commercial realtor connected us with Jonathan and our call with Jonathan helped ease our minds the most from the beginning because he was knowledgeable about all the parts. And if he didn't have the knowledge needed, if that was not his department, he had connections that did. So for us to be able to be in our zone of genius and just know that Jonathan and his team were taking care of everything here, we weren't micromanaging, we weren't stopping by every day. We just knew that things were going smoothly, which for first time uh, business owners, that was huge. Having a turnkey process for you meant that that was one less thing that you had to grapple with, right? While you're yeah. dealing with ABC permits and ordering furniture and ff &E, that, that sounds like that was a good process for you guys. Yes, it was very smooth and we could not have asked for a better introduction. The decision making process is so laborious when you're trying to do, I mean, the little tiniest things like stamping coffee sleeves and like, did we order shoe covers in case somebody doesn't want to wear socks? Like we have so much running through our minds. So to have that handoff, not having to research people, knowing trusted vendors will come from y'all and come from Liv was such a weight lifted off of our shoulders. Oh, that's great, great. Well, I'm glad it worked out that way. You wanna take them for a tour? Sure, let's do it. So the concept that you know we partnered with the original carry location on is beer, wine, champagne, coffee, and kids. So this is where the beer, wine, champagne, coffee happens. So not only were we trying to build a space and find a space. We were learning how to make espresso, picking out the right equipment, getting up with vendors on that. And then we've got beer deliveries coming in this week. We have a full coffee bar, full six taps of local beer, wine, champagne, mimosas, all kinds of stuff. And then for little kids, we've got snacks, we've got juice, milk, 
water. We want everyone to just kind of be able to come in, not worry about anything in play because we know how hard it is to get out of the house with a toddler. So if you do that, you get a reward. And we're in such an area with such high foot traffic that we really want this space to be comfortable for our neighbors and our community to feel comfortable coming in, whether they have kids or not. I struggle with vision, so Jonathan was great to come in and say, all right, we could take this down, we could do a half wall here. So this used to be very boxy and closed in and not welcoming at all. With them being uh, an assembly use with children and alcohol that is a very specific section in the building code so when we first met we had tentatively looked at this space but one of the real benefits to what this space was was that it was a children's play space and so we didn't have to go through a lot of change of use and things like that which had they gone as a some that used to be a doctor's office or something like that or straight retail we would have had a lot of issues to contend with so one of the things that I told them, and this is the benefit of us being on board early, is when we looked at the space, I said, that is a significant benefit to you because you're not having to go through and make a lot of changes that aren't really part of your space fit up because you've got to do that for, for code compliance. So that was one of the biggest benefits. One of the biggest challenges was this space, when we first came into it, was very dark and was very constrained. The entry wall was here. They had the shoe cubby out here. They had a check-in desk here. It was very, very tight. One of the first things I said to them when we came in and they were explaining the vision and after we visited the carry location is, you really want this to be open. And so one of the first things we did was take this wall out and basically add this curved wall element and this here. So we really created a nice, open, welcoming entry point. And then reworking the, the, the bar and configuration, a lot of thought went into this, working with both the colors, the fixtures, the materials, how it laid out, because this is really the key element when you come in. And so a lot of transactional stuff happens right in this point. And then it's the transition point to where you go and play with the kids or uh, can sit down and have a drink. Then really everything else was kind of open it up, clean it up, do nicer lighting, get it nice and light and bright in here. And by, by opening this wall up now, when you come in, you get this daylight all the way into the space. And then they came back and added some of the, the, the decoration and decor with the wallpaper and the neon lighting and stuff to really create that welcoming atmosphere. So here in the play space, I have tried to create more large areas that I can change out as the seasons go along. Um, and that's another reason it was so great that Jonathan had the vision for a big open space because things can be moved around. Again, we hope to be a place where people come back over and over, and we want it to be different and fun for them each time. What is the age range of kids that you see being here? That is a great question. So we are most popular with the under five crowd. With these larger stations, I hope to attract some older children as well, but the under five crowd is kind of our sweet spot. So we do have kind of some larger structures as well. This is kind of a gentler, play area. The pillars were something that was very interesting when we started. First of all, as any woman does, I said, is this load bearing and yeah. can we take it out? <laughs> and they were like, we can't do that. Yeah. Cool. So we'll make it work. I sketched it with pencil and sent it to a painter and she came and literally start to finish the vision was exactly how I hoped. So this is our infant only area. We've got lots of padding mirrors. This is our kind of crown jewel. This comes from a company in Maine called Cedar Works. What I really love about it too is is with all of your selections. Like you said, somebody coming, you know, twice or two, three times a day, but even if they come from month to month, the space can be configured completely differently. Totally. And I think that's what keeps it fresh, mm -hmm. especially for the kids. And it's been so fun the kids we've had in so far, they'll take the guitar and they'll come put it in the playhouse or they'll you know, spin something around on the Christmas tree that you know, we never would have thought. Right. This is gonna be our stage. So we have costumes, musical instruments, little chairs to watch. This is my favorite already, I can tell you that. Yes. Sure. So the this is another use of board. one of those poles. We've got Legos over here. We have a magnet board on the back. It's interesting being in a lease as well because it is your space. We have 10 years here. Yeah. I'm thinking, is this like an apartment? Can I paint the walls? Like, what can we do to yeah. make it ours? So that was another way that Jonathan's team was really helpful. This is actually the <laughs> most popular thing at all of the indoor play spaces. This is our daughter's absolute favorite. You can fill it with balls. The kids jump around the outside. 
They make a little swing so you can like swing into it. So we moved this back here in kind of its own area, you know, kind of marrying places for the parents to sit, relax, enjoy, but making it kind of all flow together and make yeah, sense. Yeah. So this is our party room. And right now we have it set up for our grand opening so that people can kind of feel like they're at a birthday party and get the experience. And then we'll also host adult events here. We wanna have mom's night out. The Carrie location has trivia night. This room is definitely an empty shell, which was hard, but seeing now what it can be has been really cool. Yeah. This floor, I have spilled grout on it. We have spilled paint on it. It's easily cleanable, easy to sanitize. The paint is wipeable. They, they kind of walked us through the process as we went, knowing our in-target audience. Well, this is an awesome space. The whole thing really came together so well. It's a vision realized, and um, we had a lot of great help along the way. Yeah, yeah, well, congratulations. You guys have been awesome to work with. Come back and see us tomorrow.